My name is Rebecca Larson, and uh, I'm a proud member of the Quinault and Quileute Indian Nation. I am a foster parent. I am a parent. I'm a grandparent. I'm a member of a beautiful community, the Swinomish, that is not my nation, but has become my home. There are elders here at Swinomish that I have sat with and we've had this conversation about when, in the past, if a strange sedan pulled up on the reservation, our mothers hit our children. The scoop was the term that we use um, because the Children's Administration and, and other agencies were allowed to come into our tribal communities and literally scoop as many children as they could, take them quickly, far from our reservations, and place them for adoption. The practice didn't really stop until the early 80s. So this is not some far away romantic idea of, oh, well, that was so long ago. My mother, Karen, was taken during that era from my grandmother, Myrtle. My grandmother, she had to go into the hospital for surgery. And while she was in the hospital, my mom and her siblings were taken. They separated them immediately and put them in separate cars. And my mother could remember driving away from the car that contained her sister and her brother. The Superior Court judge signed off on the paperwork within a matter of four days and said that my grandmother was morally unfit to raise her children. There was no explanation given. After her children were taken, some things never healed in her. She left the reservation. She was murdered on the streets of Tacoma. She was 38. My mother, Karen, went to live with this family. It was a very abusive home. She found herself pregnant with me at a very young age and was sent away. They still had Catholic-run schools for unwed girls. She was forced to sign papers to give me up for adoption, and she ran away from that place and never went home. She carried that brokenness with her out onto the streets, which is where she lived. She was unseen and unheard and never allowed to come home because of those systems that were in place to keep us from our communities. I was taken at birth uh, and placed in a foster home and I can remember the day my social worker came to collect me and take me to uh, meet my prospective parents. I was not quite four. I remember meeting these strange people, non-native folks. They oohed and awed over me, and in less than a week, my things were packed. It was the 70s, and there was no ICWA in place to protect me. My adoptive mother was very abusive to me physically. My adoptive father, he was very abusive to my mother. My going to 18 different schools was so that my father couldn't be found out. We moved to protect his abusive behavior. Moving to Swinomish was a moment of grace to be connected to a tribal community and to people who I understood inherently. What really saved me in that situation was being able to talk to um, the youth director and I shared with him the things that were um, going on behind closed doors in my home. And he and his family, they just took me into the fold of their family because that's what we do as Indian people. We are tied to our culture in a way that I think is very different from other communities. You don't grow up with just your nuclear family, your immediate parents and your immediate siblings. In tribal communities, we grow up together in large extended families. Most adoptees who are not uh, covered by IGWA and who are adopted out into non-tribal homes are not afforded that. That unsettled feeling, they don't even know what that is. It wasn't until I became connected to a tribal community that I understood. It had to do with my disconnection to our people. I think that my life would have been very different if Iqua uh, had been available or in existence at the time of my forced adoption, being taken from my mother, and 
certainly would have changed my mother's life during the scoop era if it had been in place at that time to protect her, that she would have been placed with a family within our extended family. She would have stayed connected to our culture and to our people. For me, coming full circle, wanting to become licensed as a foster home is to keep our children connected to the communities so that they don't feel that strange, where am I, who am I, where do I come from? I didn't become a licensed foster parent in hopes to fast track adopt children. I have two boys in my care right now, little boys who are lost in the system. There are people longing for them to come home. When I tuck them in at night, we pray for their mom and we pray that she can do the things that she needs to do. Because as a foster parent, your goal should always be reunification. The assault on our communities against our children, it continues today. When our children are lost, they languish in care. The disproportionality of the numbers of our children who are in extended care, who do not return home, are horrific and wrong. And ICWA is in place to protect us from that. Sometimes people say that the issue is too complex. And when I hear that word, I think about my mother dying. I think about my grandmother being murdered. I think about my great-grandparents, and I think about our ancestors that have prayed for us as children and as great-grandchildren and as, as far down as, as they could think ahead. What ICWA brings to our communities is the hope that our children are going to be connected to us and not lost to us forever.